Hey, welcome to my electronics channel. In this video, I want to talk about PN junctions, which are basically the simplest type of semiconductor device that you can have. So as you might surmise, a PN junction is made up of a P-type material and an N-type material. And what that means, as far as the device goes, is we would have a device that is made that's doped on one side with p-type material, so for p-type material you are doping it with an atom that has one fewer electron in the valence shell, so you're left over with these holes where there's a missing electron which you can be represented by some positive charges, p for the positive charges, and on the other side of the material it's, it's doped with an n-type material and that is where you replace some of the intrinsic ad intrinsic semiconductor atoms with atoms that have one extra electron in the valence shell. So we can denote those extra electrons with a negative charge, with a negative sign. One thing to note is even though I have extra positive charges over here and extra negative charges over here, that's not actually extra charges compared to what's in the proton the overall charge is going to be neutral. It's just that I have extra charge carriers which are positive on the p-type material and negative on the n-type material. So if I just have, if I have this p-n junction manufactured and just sitting on, my, on the lab bench, what's going to happen is there's going to be some drift of these extra negative charge carriers over into these holes, the extra positive charge carriers. So what's going to happen? Negative will join up with positive, negative will join up with positive, and negative will join up with positive as this drift occurs. And the end result is that we have this PN junction where there's a gap where the these electrons have joined with the holes where there's no extra charge carrier. So we still have the P-type material over here, and we still have the N-type material, the extra negative charge carriers over here. But here we don't have any extra charge carriers. This region here is called the depletion region. And because the negatives moved over here to the positive side, that what's going to happen is it's going to leave this over here slightly negatively charged and this over here slightly positively charged. And the voltage gradient here is is an important feature of a PN junction and the, the particular voltage is called the barrier voltage and we'll see what the importance of the barrier voltage is in a sec. Now there are two orientations or ways that you can set up a PN junction when you're putting it into a circuit and, and the orientation is going to determine how the PN junction behaves. So the first orientation is going to look something like this. So these are wires connecting to a power supply and this power supply is going to be negative over on this side and positive over on this side. So what's going to happen here? These positive charges are going to be attracted to the negative side, or another way to put this if we're looking at electron flow, is electrons over here are going to flow into the P side and fill up the holes which are positively charged. So these electrons are going to flow into the P side and fill up all of these holes Simultaneously, the extra electron charge carriers on this side are going to be attracted towards the positive side of the power supply and flow to the positive side of the power supply. And what's going to happen is all of these electron, extra electron charge carriers are going to be pulled out and all of these extra positive charge carriers, the holes, are going to be filled with these electrons. And after a brief period of time, you're going to be left over with this PN junction, which is no longer really a PN junction because all of the extra charge carriers have been pulled out of it. And this type of orientation where we connect the positive side of the power supply to the N-type material and the negative side of the power supply to the P-type material is called reverse biased. And after that short period of time when all the charge carriers get pulled out, the PN junction will no longer conduct. In the other orientation, where I switch this voltage source around so that I have positive connected to the p-type material and negative connected over to the n-type material, what's going to happen is I will have electrons flowing out of the voltage source, pushing 
towards these electrons, and what's going to happen is, depending on this voltage, the voltage of the, of the source, this push of electrons, or this push from the voltage source, is going to narrow the depletion region. So it's going to push that depletion region from the negative side towards the positive side, and at the same time, from the positive side over to the negative side, because I have this positive charge that's pushing these positive holes towards the middle. And if my voltage is big enough, and by big enough I mean this voltage is bigger than the barrier voltage right here, what's going to happen is I will have the depletion region completely closed. I will have positive charges in the p-type material, negative charges in the n-type material, and those are basically combining, continuously combining. These electrons will flow into the holes, electrons into the holes, electrons into the holes, the electrons will move along, and then I'll get electrons coming out of here, being attracted towards the positive side of the voltage source, and electrons on the negative side of the voltage source getting pushed, on, pushed into the n-type material side. And this is going to cause a continuous current flow as electrons are pushed into here, they get pushed along, join up with the holes, the holes are coming into the towards the middle as well, and then the electron holes, we, we model this as the holes moving towards the depletion region, but really what's happening is electrons are hopping from hole to hole, and then ultimately out the other side of the, of the p-type material. And so we get a completed circuit that allows for conduction, so, so current will flow in the circuit, and in this orientation, this is called a forward biased circuit, or forward bias p injunction. Okay, to summarize what we've learned about p-n junctions in this video, a p-n junction is made by putting p-type material adjacent to n-type material. And it's not, it's actually not as simple as just taking p-type material and sticking it next to n-type material. They actually need to be created from the same initial intrinsic semiconductor. One side gets doped with p-type material and one side gets doped with n-type material. When there is no biasing, so no external voltage applied, a depletion region is formed where the holes on one side are filled with the extra electrons, the elect extra electron charge carriers from the other side. Applying a voltage across a p-n junction is referred to as biasing. And when the p-n junction is reverse biased, with the negative side connected to the p-type material and the positive side of the voltage source connected to the n-type material, no current will flow. This is reverse biasing. When the positive side of the voltage source is connected to the p-type material and the negative side is connected to the n-type material, this is called forward biasing and current is able to flow in the circuit. So in this way, a p-n junction can act as kind of a one-way control for current. So I hope you learned some in this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.